All right, so it's been about five months since my last Q&A, and I figured it was high time for another one. So I asked over on Twitter what questions you guys had for me, and here are a couple of them. A question that I got a lot of actually is what's my daily driver? I'm still using the Galaxy S8 Plus. I don't think the Galaxy S9 was enough of a change to warrant a full switch of my device, but I'm a hardware guy, not a software guy, and the Galaxy S8 is working just fine for me. All right, so first question is, when are you gonna do some mods for your Tacoma? Um, this might be a surprise to some of you, but I do have a second channel, which I've done a couple small mods on. I mostly reserve that channel for like just smaller things. I don't want to turn into like a full-scale production for this channel, but I've put a roof rack on my truck. At the end of this week, I will be getting a lift for my truck. I'm going to jack it up about three inches and put some bigger tires on it. That I'll put on this main channel. I'll link my second channel down in the description, just Zach's Jerry Rig, same as all my social medias. Um, and then I will also be putting a light bar on my truck in between the roof racks, but I'm not sure if I'm going to stick that on the main channel or the second channel. But the Tacoma still is running great. I've put about 6,000 miles on it, and I've had it for about three months. Still love it. Next question is, where do the phones go after you test them? I actually have a stack of phones over there in the corner. I actually keep all of the phones that I do tests on, just in case I need to reference them in other videos. So I don't give them away, but at the end of their lifespan, you know, after they're not relevant anymore, after a couple years, I do harvest the parts and use them for other broken phones, or I sell them or recycle them. Nothing ever gets wasted and nothing ever gets thrown out here on my channel. Speaking of breaking things, have you ever broken something, like a leg or an arm? So I've never actually broken a bone. I have sprained my ankle a couple times jumping off of buildings, but no broken bones. I have had stitches a lot though, which brings us to our next question. What's your worst injury from trying to fix things? When I was about eight years old, I had a coping saw. It's like a little handheld saw that my grandpa gave me, Grandpa Jerry. And uh, I was actually, it's the scar you can see on my thumb in the majority of my videos. I was making flying pencil people out of wood. I had a little artwork that I drew on the piece of wood and I was using the coping saw to cut around it. And the saw was so sharp, cut right through my finger. It was deep enough that I needed stitches, but not deep enough that I was worried about losing my thumb or anything. But yeah, if you've ever wondered why I had that scar in some of my videos, it was because eight-year-old me had some projects he was working on. Next tweet was, have you ever crashed a car? And the answer to that is yes. Back in high school, I was working construction and I pulled an all-nighter with a concrete pour, you know, that you have to start at night and then finish the huge slab during the day. And uh, so I drove back home after like, you know, 24 hours of no sleep and working hard. And I ended up uh, crashing my truck and totaling it. And so uh, this is a picture of that and the hair you see in the picture is real, and the damage to the truck is also real. I've had a few minor dents and dings in my vehicle since then, but nothing as serious as that one. Have you ever thought about opening a P.O. box? Yes, actually, I do have a P.O. box. I've put it in some of the descriptions of my videos. I will put that also right here. If you want to send me stuff for review or just send me stuff in general, you can always do that. I will also have it linked in the About section of my channel. So if you're watching this video a couple years from now, make sure it's up to date. I like this question. Do you have an engineering degree or any higher education degree, and do you consider it as something important? Something important? Yes and no. I did graduate college with a bachelor's in business, so I do have that you know, higher degree, but I've never actually used it. I always knew that I was going to work for myself after I was done with school. I've always had that kind of entrepreneurial mindset, even as like a little kid. But I was never the biggest fan of like school in general, where you had to like sit down and you know look at the teacher and like learn a bunch of fluff stuff in order to get to the more important materials. And it was super irksome when they would pull up a YouTube video that I could find for free on the internet myself, and they would play it in class that I was paying thousands of dollars for. That was frustrating. So I feel like a motivated person can learn the exact same thing for free online, and they don't necessarily need to go to college to get that piece of paper, the degree. But that piece of paper is incredibly important if you're gonna be hired for a job in the future. So that companies know you actually put in the effort and learn something. People always point out that, oh, Steve Jobs dropped out of school or Bill Gates dropped out of school. And yeah, that's true, they didn't graduate from college, but at the same time, they already had something in place making them money before they dropped out. You know, so if you have a plan and it's successful, then maybe school is not, you know, the most important thing. But until you have something in place that is working, stay in school, graduate, and get that degree as a good backup plan. Plus, being in school around people in the same degree as you is like the best way to network, and you can use those connections throughout your entire life. Networking is almost more important than the actual knowledge you have. But yeah, I did graduate, and school is good for the most part.
Another question, why are newer phones getting harder and harder to repair? And to answer this, I would have to say aesthetics for one. I mean, first and foremost, people wanna buy phones that look good and hard to repair phones, you know, that hide the screws or using premium materials, those look good and people wanna buy them. But also very close to that first point, a repairable phone lasts longer. And therefore companies like Apple or Samsung make less money if people can easily fix them. And personally, I'm hoping that by running the largest cell phone repair channel on the internet, that I'm helping you, the viewer, the customer, save money and keep money in their own pocket. Because the best way to recycle a cell phone is to keep it alive as long as possible, prolong that lifespan before you have to buy something else. Which is kind of why I'm still using the Galaxy S8 and not directly switching to the Galaxy S9 because I just don't need it right now. Are you a full-time YouTuber? Yes, I have had my channel for about six years now and for the last three of those, I've been full-time YouTube. I still have side projects here and there that I do, but YouTube is my main venture. And surprisingly, there, there's a lot of questions about this too. How much time per week do you put in at the gym? So since YouTube is my full-time job and uh, I work for myself, the gym is one of the only places where I get you know, social interaction. And so I go there pretty much every day. Had a lot of questions on what I do at the gym. Usually start off with cardio, try to burn you know, anywhere from 300 to 600 calories doing cardio, and then the rest of the week I space out different weightlifting activities with free weights and benching and stuff like that. I don't feel like I can like legitimately start my day until I've already been to the gym. It's become a habit at this point, and I really enjoy it, so it's fun. What percentage of my audience is from different parts of the world? So I actually looked this up. In the last 30 days, I'll put this right here, about 30% of my audience is from the United States, 12% is from India, 6% from the UK, 3% from Germany, and 3% from Canada. You can kind of see it cycling down along the bottom there. The other 48% is from the rest of the country, so it's a pretty worldwide audience. Most of those are from the ages of 18 to 35, and they are male. For example, if you look at the last video I put out, this is a drone where I reviewed that egg drone, 1% of the viewers of that video were female. Which brings us to our next question, do you have a girlfriend? And no, I do not. I have to work on getting those female metrics up past 1%. Can you speak Spanish? Si, sí, hombre. Hablo un poco. Aprendí mi español en Guatemala. I learned my Spanish in Guatemala. I lived in Guatemala for two years when I was 19 years old serving a mission for my church. Have you ever seen those you know, two guys walking around in a white shirt and tie? I was one of those Mormon missionaries. But after the two year mission is up, you go home and live your life like a normal person just as a normal member of the church again. It was definitely a cool experience. And while I was there, I learned Spanish. Next question, did you always live in Utah and how did you meet what's inside? So I did all of my high school years here in Utah, so I count that as pretty much growing up, you know, besides the two years in Guatemala. And I actually, so What's Inside lives here in Utah as well, but we actually met in Ireland at a video conference called The Power of Video, talking about YouTube and stuff to, you know, the people of Northern Ireland. But, you know, after that, we came back, that was about two years ago, and we've been friends ever since. YouTube is kind of a very unique career choice, and so it's nice having someone who does the same thing that you can kind of connect with. Plus, we both like taking stuff apart, so it's a win-win situation. If you have any questions that I didn't get around to answering or I haven't answered in my other Q and A's, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'll be there for a couple hours after this video is posted answering those questions. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I got a bunch more truck videos, cell phone repair videos, and durability tests coming up in the near future. Come follow me on Twitter so you can be part of the next question and answer, and I'll see you on Instagram. Thanks a ton for watching, and I will see you around.